Hi, this is Felix from Chorus One, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the governance process on the Cosmos Hub, what is implemented, how it works, where you can find the proposals, where you can find the voting status, how you can participate in voting yourself. And I'm going to go through an example of the atom transfer enablement votes and uh, our kind of reasoning about why we won't want to vote yes on this one. So you can find all this information on, on the blog. I will link through it in the notes. Cosmos is implementing an on-chain governance mechanism so that the token holders can kind of signal their intent, how, how they want their blockchain to be governed. We have experienced that many blockchains have a problem with kind of making decisions and kind of being clear what do people actually want. Cosmos is taking a quite straightforward approach where there is a proposal system which is just text proposals and people that stake their tokens, so arguably the ones that have the most the high stake in this in the system can signal uh, their support for specific proposals and then in the second step it still needs to be implemented that is not all fully automated but it's a pretty straightforward and a, it's a w it's a mechanism that's probably going to evolve a lot over over the time and i th it's i think it's a great start so let's start with how it w is it what is implemented and how it works so basically everyone that owns some like a tiny amount of atoms can submit a proposal, a text proposal. And uh, in this proposal, you're going to specify what you want to change and like link exactly to how it's going to work and how also there's, it's going to be implemented at the second in the later point. And uh, this is mostly done like it's a small text and it's a link through IPFS where it's described in more detail and also probably a link to the forum discussion to this proposal. Then once this proposal is submitted, it enters into the so-called deposit period. This is a two weeks period, a maximum of two weeks period where people can deposit some atoms towards these proposals. And uh, this is there to avoid having people spam meaningless proposals. So only those that have a specific, some deposit will go into the voting period. If uh, this limit right now is 512 atoms, so if p if the proposal in this period of two weeks doesn't gather enough support to have 512 atoms behind it, the people that su supplied some to the WhatsApp deposit get refunded their atoms. It's also important to note that you can have multiple parties supplying this deposit, so it doesn't need to be the one that submits the proposal. Once the 512 atoms are deposited, the deposit period ends and we enter into the voting period, which is a two week period right now, during which uh, atom holders that stake their tokens can participate in, in voting on, on the issue. And uh, once this voting period is over, the decision will be made depending on a few factors and changes will be implemented. So right now there is a discussion and it's going to change probably to having a two-phase proposal for a software upgrade. So it, what this means is basically in the first phase you just decide on what you want to change. And in the second phase it's a proposal that specif specifies a specific software upgrade that is uh, out there. and on that one you vote again if that kind of matches what is happening what you was decided in the first proposal and if both these match then it will be implemented and yeah the software will upgrade it validators will upgrade their nodes and the change will be made to know about this governance process are that validators vote and the v delegators inherit their votes but the delegators are able to override the votes of all their validators and send a transaction themselves, which then counts as their vote. So in that way, the Cosmos system achieves a pretty great uh, voting turnout, which is a problem in other systems. We, we've saw like uh, voter apathy pretty big in, in other blockchain networks. So I think this is a great way of kind of having people, some representatives for these people that are not so interested, but those that really are interested can vote themselves. The, this is here displayed in this nice graphic. And then there's also abstain, which means, okay, I, for this issue, I don't care, but I've voted still. So 
these uh, abstain votes also count towards a quorum. So at least 40% of the total staked atoms need to have participated in governance for a proposal to be considered accepted. And then subtracting the abstain votes, at least 50% of the votes need to be in favor of the proposal and less than 33.33% need to have vetoed the proposal. And if all these three uh, yeah, criteria are met, then the proposal has passed and it should be implemented and the deposits are recovered to the first people that supplied them. If the proposal is rejected, the deposits go into the community pool. So there is kind of a downside if you are depositing the, the atoms in the beginning. If your proposal gets rejected, you will basically fund some public uh, things that will be good for Cosmos, but which is also nice. So I mentioned for a second this two-step process. So let's dive into a specific proposal, which is the transfer enablement proposal. You can find uh, all the proposals on different blog explorers. Now I chose Hubble. I, I like their way of displaying it. It's really cool. And uh, so basically you see here on, on Cosmos Hub on governance proposals, and then you can see which ones are active. You can also start a new one from there. And let's go towards this uh, transfer enablement proposal. So right now you can also see how, what is already voted, where the quorum is, and how much time has passed or when it was submitted and when it ends the, the, the voting period. Now, um, here is also the description of the proposal and you can see who voted in with what way. You can see the link to IPFS. So let's get into the specifics of this proposal and how we at Corazon evaluate this proposal. And then I will also show you how you can participate in voting yourself using a tool that we made that is available on our website. So in this specific proposal, there is a outlay for the plan, how to, uh, how transfers will be activated and it, it, it describes also the criteria which should be met for this feature to be enabled. But then there is also a second part which introduces a sped up governance process for the second proposal, which is the one where you vote on a specific git hash and a specific block height to then see if the spec from the first proposal matched the actual implementation of the software. And uh, what this second step does is it uh, introduces a first a buffer period when the proposal starts which is 24 hours and then there is the possibility for a for the proposal to be accepted earlier than before the two weeks ended in the case that two-thirds of the total voting power voted in favor of this proposal for longer than 24 hours what that means is that instead of having to wait for the whole period the proposal will be able to be implemented earlier which in the end will speed up the process of uh, having atom transfers enabled. So if you look at it right now, I, I have, we would have posted another blog post that uh, kind of summarizes this evaluation that I am now also giving you uh, in this video. But in this post, you can also see the timeline of how things went down. So like on March, March 13, we had the Cosmos Hub launching the first proposal came in on the 25th and uh, there was this suggestion to update the proposal because it wasn't clearly specified or it was specified that kind of Tendermint should release the software. But now there was this recommendation we should have a two-step upgrade process that goes from yeah describing the plans and then actually voting on the software and uh, the blockade so that you can upgrade the network in a decentralized manner. This proposal went live like... Uh, two days ago and it already entered the oh, here uh, the the voting period and it seems like it's already on a good way to pass and now within this two week period while people are, can vote on this proposal the cosmos the version that is that will be on the mainnet with transfers will be released and there will be a testnet to test the new version which will have a larger block size and transfers enabled so that you that we can see if, if that's also going to be stable on testnet and if that is the case 
there will be the second proposal, which kind of says, okay, is it ready to be implemented on mainnet? And then which block height are we going to do it? That would be on the April 17th at this point, and um, or at earliest at April 17th. And then if, if everything goes as quick as possible, on April 19th, it could be possible that transfers are enabled if both of these proposals pass. So essentially, what do we say in this block list is we are in favor of voting and we voted yes for this proposal because we uh, believe that we want to yeah we want to be as early as possible have the transfers enabled obviously we want to make sure that it's running safely but at the same time we re recognize that uh, this is maybe like we still need to work on the formalizing the governance process so we think there should be a separate proposal at some point that uh, kind of specifies how these two so two step software upgrade works and also how the state that is carried over from the old chain to the new one is treated, which is in this point kind of a, a little bit underspecified. So now let's take a look how you would participate in governance if you want to vote yourself, if you don't agree with your validators or any other matter that you might want to vote, which we highly encourage everyone to make their own decisions. So you go on your, our website, like, no, I skipped this. Uh, you go to the Cosmos page of our website and you go to click vote. Now you need to have your ledger connected and the Cosmos application open. Here I have my ledger. I'm going to open the Cosmos Ooh. application. It's going to check if I have the right version installed. And then it's going to show me the uh, governance proposals. Here I can simply choose the one that is the relevant one. So it's this one, the second one. And I can here again see the options and uh, yeah, the small text and again the IPFS link. Then if I want to vote, I'm just pressing the vote button. Right now here we have a setting for, a recommended setting for gas. Right now it's actually zero fee transactions, but you can also specify your own gas settings if you want, want to. And then you simply press generate my transaction. It's gonna pop up on your device. You can also click here, view transaction data, then you're gonna see the details and you can cross check it with what is gonna be displayed on your ledger here. So I obviously already did this and it should be the same as here. And also you should check here that everything is correct and is what you put in. And yeah, then you go through the ledger by clicking the right button through all these uh, texts. Then it's going to show up view transaction or sign transaction. You go to sign transaction and to sign it, you press both buttons on the ledger. The R2 will recognize that you did so and will submit the transaction to the blockchain. And now you need to wait a few moments until the transaction is accepted. The Accepting the transaction may take a while, especially because you're sending a zero fee transaction. So sometimes it takes a few blocks. So just wait and then it will hopefully show you this screen where it confirms your transaction, where you can also see it on the block explorer, your transaction of voting here, I, s I see mine. And yeah, that's it. You now participate in voting. You can go see again <laughs> if you had an impact. And thanks for watching this video and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more information.